Good afternoon. Again, this is Dr. Zhang's daily blog. Today, my talk is what kind of IVF protocol is the best protocol? I always get this question from the patient that what is the best protocol? And my answer is always there is one protocol will be the best protocol for any kind of patient or for any kind of situations or even for the same patient in a different menstrual cycles. So whatever the protocol which will be tailored and suitable for you and this is the best protocol for you. Generally speaking, in our center we have four major different kind of idea protocols. So the difference among these protocols is mainly in terms of the medications the patient may get. For example, we have four protocols. Start with a natural cycle IVF, which you use no medications. You just try to catch one natural egg. This is called a natural cycle IVF. The most suitable patient for this natural cycle IVF is the patient only want to have one child and have very good prognosis and they just needed to do IVF. For example, a lady at the age of 32 already had three children. She had a tubal ligation, now want to have one more child. So she has perfect of everything, and the one egg to make a baby, but the tube is blocked. So the best protocol for this patient is a natural side. They don't need to freeze more embryos. They just want to have one more child. They already have three children. Second circumstance which may go with the natural cycle IVF is a male effect. Husband have severe male effect and the lady is extremely fertile with the regular period. Do they need to make a 15 X to do the IVF cycle because the sperm is an issue? No, natural cycle will be very suitable. So who will be the candidate for the conventional IVF to make a 25 X and try to get that insurance possible? That will be the patient with some kind of a cancer and they are going through chemotherapy. They are going to go through the chemotherapy very soon. They are running out of time. We want to get as many eggs as possible. And they are young. They are 25 years old. They are 33 years old. Or they could be 19 years old. So that kind of patient, you want to give a huge amount of medicine, get as many eggs as possible, and they are done. And usually, due to their ages, they're making good amount of good quality eggs. The definition of good quality eggs meaning this is X can make a life for babies. So another two protocol is called a ultra minimal stimulation and a minimal stimulation IVF cycle. So ultra minimal stimulation IVF cycle meaning that the photo cycle will be only the, the ovaries will be only be stimulated with oral pills such as letrozole and chromium pills. What kind of patient would be suitable for ultra minimal stimulation IVF? Low ovarian reserve. They only make one or two or three eggs, and the pills will do the job. So this kind of patient will do ultra minimal stimulation IVF. So what about a minimal stimulation IVF? Minimal stimulation IVF usually will take in nine days of oral pills. Again, it will be could be the letrozole, colomia, or could be a combination of both, together with one, two, three, or four, five days of a very low dose of injection of fertility drugs such as Provel, Folistin, Gonaf, or Manopril. And usually they get about 75 to 150 units per day for three to five days. So total amount of medicine they will receive is about 20% of the medicine a lady may receive in a conventional IV. And typically they make between six to eight X. So what group of patients will be suitable for this kind of IVF? Usually the patient have a reasonable ovarian reserve or 20 to 30% below the average number. For example, the patient antral follicle count is only around 6 or AMH and murine hormone level is a very mid to 1. So from 0 0.4 to 1.4 in that range of AMH, while we only can make up between 3 to 6x, the minimum stimulation IVF will be most suitable. So that's how we decide which protocol. And the 
basic idea is trying to find different shoes to fit in different sides of the feet, rather than use one shoe to fit all. And this is very important. So the modern trends of in vitro fertilization is not about the one standard protocol. It's about the multiple protocol, multiple protocols, and which will be selected carefully for each individual patient. Once you know their ovarian reserve, previous fertility history, and then we we'll try the different protocols. And that is the protocol. That is what we do to choose the right protocols for the right patient. Now, I also very often to see the patient come to us after they've done one or two or three IVF cycles at the age of 39 or older and they're taking 600 units of injection every day. They made a 15, 20 years, but they're not getting pregnant. And they ask why. Very simple, the quality of the eggs are controlled by your age and also the number of quality eggs can produce per month also reduce significantly based on the age. And by the time you reach to 39 to 43 years old, you probably don't make more than two or three good quality eggs. The egg may make to blastocyst stage embryo. The embryo will get you pregnant or give you a live birth baby. It's really only about one or two or three. So even if you can make 15 eggs, not only may reduce the quality of eggs, it does not give you more quality eggs. And more recent paper also clearly show that when you're taking significant high level of gonadotropin, meaning the heavy injection, not only you don't get pregnant, you actually reduce the quality of the eggs. And if you are interested in this part of the information, we're going to present some data in the next few uh, blocks. So, in conclusion, the protocol which we're going to choose for each individual patient who are undergoing IVF has to be carefully selected. It's not a one standard protocol. It's based on patient previous history, previous failed IVF history, and the desire of the number of children they want, the patient's age. Then you come out the most optimal protocol. And this is one of the most important parts of the IVF. Thank you.